We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're back, baby. Oh, I missed your beautiful I got, face. I, I missed you, mate. I, um, miss you so I got a, a fair few messages from people saying, can we get Prime Train on the podcast and make it like it was the first time you did a podcast with him, <laughs> which was on the NTF podcast. <laughs> so what um, what questions are you <laughs> going to throw me? Because I know what that podcast... Is that podcast even still up? We took it down. We did take it down. So we, we took it down. Okay. So for those that don't know, Tom, Gab and myself did a podcast. Um, we were, it was kind of, we, were, we were finding our identity with the um, social media stuff and I think we might have had a bit to drink. Yeah, we had a few Colton drafts. Yep, potentially even puffed on a vape. <laughs> and and we were really trying to, we were going hard in the paint, weren't we? <laughs> we were going super hard in the paint and unfortunately, well, fortunately probably, we got mm. out of it what we set out to get out of it, which was a lot of engagement. Yeah, um, We told true stories and mm. shared stories, um, maybe overshared yeah, some I think, stories. Yeah, I think we did. So much so that we, we did take the, the podcast down. It's no longer there. So it doesn't exist anymore. It's actually sitting in like an archive. So one button and our whole careers are gone. Do you want to bring it back ever? Oh, I, I do enjoy the podcast. <laughs> I honestly thought it was one of the best potties ever. It was such a good podcast. But uh, no, we better not. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sunday Run podcast. I've got one of my best mates here, a bloke I love, and I'm really appreciative you're on, mate, uh, Tom Bolsh, otherwise known as Prime Train. How are you, mate? Good, mate. I'm very well. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very appreciative. Um, like you said, I love you as well. You're my housemate and you're probably my best friend as well. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be on. I wanted to, to kick off by, by asking you, like, firstly, how you are, uh, but also how are you finding living in Melbourne now, six months or so from Noosa? From Noosa, I think uh, we look outside at the moment. Mm. It's beautiful. It's, it's a nice <laughs> It's a nice looking day. It's, it's about nine degrees <laughs> yeah. out there. So um, I guess moving from Noosa to Melbourne, I've dealt a lot with the change of weather, which is probably the main thing that a lot of people talk about, uh, mm. probably the disadvantages of, of moving to Melbourne. But for me, I've been super grateful for the opportunities that have arisen, um, the people that I live with mm. mainly – um, you know, obviously yourself and Gab and, and, and Hess as well. The house has been a, a lot of fun and, and I think that we've all pushed each other and because we're all very competitive people, I think that we've all pushed each other to, I think, just make our businesses better. But also, like, as people, mm. I think it's also helped us figure out a lot of things about ourselves um, that we can make better as well. Yeah, it's, it's big because like, we have such, like, three really big personalities in one house. It, it's, it's always going to test things. And I think the common misconception is that it's like always sunshine and rainbows. Mm. It's not. I, you and I are pretty sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had an, a disagreement. No, I don't think we have, but we had a few, um, had a few sherbets the other night and, and you were honest yeah. and you were like, well, I haven't really enjoyed living in the house for the past two weeks because sometimes it gets difficult. And for anyone out there that's listening that has mates and friends, you know, you go through waves of when you bloody love each other mm. and same with your, your, your family as well. Like you love each other. And then sometimes you, you kind of dip into this, like yeah. you're a little bit off. It's almost like a graph of getting too comfortable with someone, mm. you know, like you, you get too comfortable, but you're not comfortable enough. I don't know. Anyway, how, how do you, how do you find it? Do you think? Because I like, well, in terms of what, living in the house? Yeah, or, living in the house. I, mate, I absolutely love it. It's, it's been game changing. As you said, like there was a, a struggle at the, the, well, not the start, but like we, we slipped into a bit of a toxic culture where we just taking the piss out of each other exactly. the whole time. Um, but it's good just like have those conversations and, and work through and obviously we encourage others to do it. I asked you about like how you're finding living in Melbourne coming from Noosa. I just want to preface that with like, I want to hear how you, you find the difference in cultures because mm. you, for those that don't know, Tom makes like footy content, like AFL based content. Um, it's very fitness related. It's not just footy, but predominantly footy at the moment. Um, you've got heaps of followers on, on TikTok and on Instagram, absolutely flying, like one of the most well-known creators I'd say in Australia right now. Um, and I wanted to talk to you about the different in cultures from Noosa versus Melbourne, especially in regards to footy, just to start off. Have you noticed much of a difference? Mm, very interesting. Yes, I have. But it's one of those things you don't really stop, take a step back and actually consider until you get asked these kind of questions on a podcast. And I think that Noosa in terms of the football scene, it's not as serious probably because a lot of people that move, move Noosa's a very, if you haven't been to Noosa before, it's, it's a, small kind of coastal town or city, whatever you want to call it. 
probably like 20,000 people live there, but it's very touristy, it's surfy, it's, the weather's always shiny, you know, the sun's always shining, the weather's always good. It, it's a pretty chill place to live. And I think that that uh, takes its way into the football club a lot and I think that it's a pretty chill kind of place. A lot of people move up from Victoria to Queensland to have that more relaxed, chilled-out lifestyle. Mm. So I find that in terms of footy, um, since I've moved down here, I've actually quite enjoyed the firstly the professionalism and I think that um, having a coach like Sam Murray who's come from an AFL background has been fantastic for the Wangaratta Rovers and, and for myself as well because I, I do enjoy um, having some level of professionalism to, to my football because sometimes, uh, especially in, in country footy, you kind of miss that a little bit. Mm. In terms of, um, I guess, probably what you want me to get into more is like the, the, the crowd and the hate sort of side of it. And I think yeah. that that is, that is different. There's definitely more people come to the games here in country Victoria and they're a lot more diehard fans. Mm. <laughs> you've seen that you've seen the footage you know I'm sure that you know that the fans here are like have grown up you know footy's everything mm. and um and it's pretty hectic and I think that that's definitely a, a big difference in culture like you feel I feel like there's a lot more pressure on me as well because now that I've gone for a whole year of posting all this footy content and not many people remember that it started last year I started really poorly like first Three games I struggled a lot and I've played two games this year and I've, in all honesty, struggled and haven't played to my best to best of my ability. So I think that, um, you know, for me, I feel like there's a lot more pressure on me to perform. Um, but, yeah, I think I think that there's definitely different cultures there. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely different cultures. I think it's – I don't want to come at it from a negative perspective, but, but people like – praying for your demise is, or your downfall, you know, especially in regards to what you, especially in Victoria, I think is really common. Mm. Like you've, you've had a big summer of posting lots of stuff, being yourself, which is fantastic. And then you get into footy and it's like, oh, here they are. Can't wait to just rip this folk to yeah, shreds. I, 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 I know he's shit is what people are saying. Like, I, I want him to be shit. Yeah. Like I, I'm going to, I'm going to prove it. Anyway, whatever. We'll, we'll get off that for the second. <laughs> I've never met someone who can network or like just meet people as well as you. Thank you. Living in Melbourne. So I've lived in Melbourne pretty much for, well, my whole life <laughs> and Tom gets to Melbourne and goes, oh, where are we going out tonight, boys? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, we can go to, like, public house. Uh, we can go here. And you're like, do we have, like, anyone, you know, that we how know do we get there? In? How, how are we getting in? What's, what's the go? I'm like, oh, just line up, brother. You're like, no, nah, bugger that. <laughs> so, <laughs> not lining up. <laughs> so I've, I haven't done any networking while I've lived here. And then in the six months that you've been here, you've networked like I've never met before. Do you, like, why do you think it is that you network so well? And how, how do you network so mm. well? Great question. And going back to us having such a great, um, I guess, connection in the house. Because I think that we all complement each other and we all mm. have um, things that we're good at. And for me, networking is something that I've always been pretty strong at. I think that the, the number one thing that I'll always do is make people feel so loved mm. when I meet them. They meet me, even if I don't bloody know the bloke, they're like, oh, hey, Prime, how are you? I'm like, mate, great, how are you? How's your day been? Be an active listener, even if you don't care anything about them. Mm. Like, just pretend that you do. And I will, I actually do genuinely care. Like I actually do want to know um, and I want people to feel that love as well, like back and forth because I don't know if you remember, like a lot of us forget when we were younger mm. how difficult it was to go up to someone and say, hey, mate, can I get a photo? Mm. It's, it was so hard. Yeah. Like, do you remember when you went up to, I don't know, big yeah. cousins or something? Like, terrified. Did yeah. you struggle with that? 100%, mate, and I was terrified. But I think the impressive thing is you, you treat like – like people of with a name or people who are someone who you can probably get stuff out of the same as you treat, you know, anyone else. Anyway, it's, it's impressive to I see. Think, and I think that the keys to networking, mm. one, making sure that everyone feels loved that mm. you go up to and, and you integrate yourself with. Um, I think that two, like you said, treating everyone with the exact same amount of respect um, is so important. And then three, remembering names and if you can't remember names, write them into a notes page. Mm. And I've got a notes page of all the good connections of people that I have. And any time that I need uh, a podcast guest, someone to promote a uh, singlet, someone to promote supplements, someone to promote um, a T-shirt or a hoodie, I can go back to that list of people. I'm like, this person can help me because I met them once on a night out. And I'll do that every time that I wake up from a night out. I'm like, this, this person, this person, this person. Follow them on Instagram open the, the network for communication and then I'll use that uh, for my business or just mm. just to be friends with people. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll get into your work rate in a bit, but it's bloody impressive. Now, mate, this is a running podcast. So 
most podcasts, often without guests, but because I'm super comfortable with you, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, what we do is like a little running update. Cool. Because like people listen to this while they're running. Awesome. So there's people running right now. They're probably like a K in. I normally do it right at the start. Okay. But if you're running, keep running. Um, breathe is always a good tip. Good. Lower your heart rate. Very cool. Cool. Uh, topic one, right? Good job. You're doing well. Okay, I want to get into content. I get a lot of questions about how do I get into content? How do I start? And like, I just want to kind of briefly touch over your journey. I, people can apply this. I get honestly endless questions about this. Mm-hmm. So I want you guys who are listening, like he's not necessarily a marathon runner, but in terms of content, you've pretty much like, you've, you know how to do it. How did you start out with content? Like what was it? And how did you kind of get to the point you are now? Great question. It started with a lot of failure mm. because, and you would know um, with your meteoric rise in the past <laughs> couple of months, mm. that it takes so long. You just have to keep posting. And, and I started off with a business called Pandemic Training during the pandemic. So, you know, that was COVID times, which is three years ago, probably now. And, um, and it takes a long time for you to kind of find that niche of, of things that, that you think that people are going to be able to, to connect with you. And, and f- like even with mm. your content, you've really found a way to connect with people. And I think that that's what people, f- people feel the love and that's why they follow you because you're adding value, you're connecting with them. Mm. For me, I started off mostly just posting, um, what was I posting? Just like gym workouts pretty much and exercises really. And, and that was all on Instagram and then, my kind of rise came out of TikTok and then I was posting a lot of stuff that was probably controversial. And you probably saw it at the start yeah. where it was like very controversial gym exercise. And I think that the most important thing is I had so much noise going on in the outside and I was tunnel vision focused on like what I want to get out of it. Mm. I want to get followers. I want to get views. I want to get likes. I want people mm. to buy my program. And I think that that's the way you got to start. you got to forget about all the outside sort of stuff that's happening the people that are outside, your friends, your family, whatever people are saying, just forget about it. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Mm. Um, just focus on what you're doing and, um, and eventually the results are going to come. And for me, I was very fortunate that my TikToks, <laughs> they were doing pretty terribly at start. I think I posted like five really bad ones. And then I just got one that hit and then you can just kind of copy and paste. Yeah, exactly. And the second you start adding value is where it happens. I, I can see the issue being like from people, we were talking about this the other night, mm. uh, going from like posting going out content, you know, just their normal Instagram content to posting like doing an action or like a tip video. Like that mm. is such a big jump. Mm. But there's actually no other way. Like you can't soften that. Like you can't just slowly feed into it. You mm. just have to post it. Exactly you? right. And I think that Sometimes I start talking about my own journey, but I should, I'm trying to give tips as well. Like no, the biggest tip is just to firstly just start posting. Mm. Stop worrying about, oh, should I post this? Should I post that? Forget about all that sort of stuff. Just post. That's the most important thing. Um, and then getting kind of a, a sort of niche, but still the niche can be a little bit like you can have kind of fitness as your overall niche and then you can kind of have like gym exercises, mm. motivation, gym fits like you can all fit under that niche like four different pillars I think so I like to think of content as like an overarching kind of um Mm. I guess like roof and you got your four pillars that underhold that roof and you find four things that fit underneath that roof and post those four things yeah that's such a great point I I feel like people come into it with like an idea of like I'm gonna try and find which niche I should be in and then go down it yeah but I reckon you gotta like start with like like yours is like fitness and training like i'm going to start with that and then go from there exactly you know like like people kind of trying to appear appease like the crowd first it's it's never going to work out yeah and we talk about fitness running i guess for example is a good one um you know yourself you probably do running motivation you probably do um running tips Mm. um your own journey on running um and then kind of like a almost like not to get ready with me, but kind of like that sort of stuff as well. Like, and just making sure that people feel that connection, like just find four pillars that uphold your roof and you'll be completely Mm. fine. I reckon with your content. Do you ever like feel like you should stray away from the footy stuff or like diversify more? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that with the, with the footy stuff, it's, it's difficult because (laughs) I think that I started off as a gym Mm. fitness niche and my roof's changed. It's moved. And now my, my roof's kind of footy. And then my pillars are like 
fighting, mm. <laughs> footy fighting videos because they get yeah. millions of views on TikTok. So uh, it gets me exposure. Mm. Um, kind of funny videos about footy, footy highlights, and then kind of gym training. So it's, it's, it's something I definitely want to stray away from because at the end of the day, there's only so much that you can do with footy because it's not a massive market. But at the same day, uh, on, on the same page, I'm like, why don't I just dominate the footy market? Yeah, I was just about to say, so like you know this, a lot, I haven't really made this public, but I worked for the AFL for a year doing yeah. social media. That was last year or a year, uh, two years ago. Yep. Um, and my job at the AFL was to try and connect local footy with the AFL because they're incredibly poor at it. Yes. Like they have done, I think we both agree, they've done a shocking job in connecting community footy with the pro, pro level. Yep. And like there's a, a toxic element from the pro level that they don't want to mix with anyone who's below them. Mm -hmm. And then the, the you know, local footy guys feel like pretty, pretty alienated by it. So my so, job at the AFL was to, to connect the two. Do you reckon you'll do something like that to kind of, because like, I feel like you're the perfect gap between. Yeah, 100%, uh, 100% I, I want there to be less of a gap. And growing up, I grew up in a country, very small country town with a lot of people um, kind of growing up playing footy. But like the AFL was just so far disconnected mm. from that. We didn't really have any like pathways or anything. But I think that uh, even the people that I go out into the country, Wangaratta and stuff, they would rather watch an o &M game over mm. AFL. Yeah. They prefer like o &M footy. In fact, they like they love it more. They're, they're mm. a membership. They're... You know, they're members of the Wangaratta Rovers. They're not members of any AFL teams. And, like, that's a disconnect in, like, people are either so much on one or so much, like, everyone mm. in the city is just all on their AFL team. And, and the coverage is fantastic. Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, that you're 100% yeah. right. And and the reason that uh, a lot of people in the city never see country footy because there's no media coverage of it. Mm. No one ever bloody sees it. No one sees any of that sort of stuff. No one sees a good 4K camera with some, uh, you know, they see freaking dirty old bloody... Mm. cameras with one pixel kind of thing recording a footy game so even if a highlight's sick you can't even bloody see the hanger because it's mm. you know two pixels so you can't see anything so i think that that's something i'm trying to bring to country footy a little bit yeah no nah, it's it's so cool to say. i love what you're doing and you said it a while ago like showing younger people if, if there's afl players out there who can't understand what you're doing listen to this it's showing younger people what they can do with their footy mm. it's it's not you either make afl or bust it's you either make AFL or you can go and play VFL or you can play country footy or you can play VAFA. You can get paid at country footy. You know, there's certain things you can do. And like that is so valuable because I never had that when I was young. I remember playing in a VAFA team and um, hearing someone got paid to play and it wasn't the AFL. I was like, what? what? And the coach was like, yeah, you could go and do that. Anyone can go and do it. Anyone can do but it. But growing up, we have no idea about that no stuff. Clue. I had no idea. Um, that people were coming down from Perth into our three-hour away country town and they were getting paid thousands of dollars a game and I mm. had no bloody idea. I just thought that they'd travel all that way just because they, they love of the you know love of the game kind mm. of thing. And that's um, – it's a crazy thing that I try to educate people a, a lot about. And it's obviously not – we don't do it for the money. No, uh, that's not the reason but you can make – a living yeah off Absolutely. playing country footy like yeah. if you if you want to no one knows that it's no it's one amazing. has any idea and young kids have no idea and and it's an interesting thing because i look when i play a game of footy there's you know 22 blokes on each side 44 mm. blokes you can't tell me that every single one of those blokes once in their life wanted to play afl yeah every single one of them every single one in any type of league they all wanted to do it right and it's almost a serious and yeah and they're like they all thought that 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 would be their their mm. life and their dream but um but they, they, you can still earn money and have fun and have a great life playing whatever fo level footy you want to. Yeah, it's awesome. Now back to the content. So you're podcasting now, which is cool. You're about the same amount of episodes in as the Sunday run. How are you finding it? Have you, have you learned much from that? And have you found that helps diversify your content? Yes, definitely have. I have learned to shut up a lot because I think in the first two or three episodes, I was like, talking over the top of people mm. and sometimes and you're great at it you're a fantastic podcast host it's one of your um most amazing things that that you do um because you just know how to ask a question and then <laughs> and i'm just like oh, well it, I, it took me 100 episodes oh, i've geez. been umming and ahhing through this as well like so uh, yeah hard. i try not to um to um and ah and i try not to say um bloody uh, uh like or anything like that but it's very difficult because sometimes you got to think about what you say otherwise mm. it ends up being like the first podcast that we did um, the NTF one, and we just <laughs> bloody hit <though. laughs> word vomit. <laughs> it, it bloody word vomit. Hit. No, I have found that it really um, diversifies my content, and it's it's a 
it's a maturity thing for my business. I think mm. that moving more towards a lot of people see my audience as mainly kids, and it's good being able to be like, you know, I talk to grown men, um, mm. you know, about footy or about whatever it might possibly be, and um, and I think that that earns me a level of respect from. Um, from the older generation. Yeah, and again, ideal for networking. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get into your work rate. I don't think I've ever ever met anyone who works harder than you, especially in regards to content, but in, in regards to business as well. Like I was watching you edit the um, your game day vlog, literally 48 hours. <laughs> like it's literally 48 hours of you sitting on your couch, you don't lapse com- concentration and you just stick at it. Have you always like put that much effort into it or is it just because it's grown? Yeah, I think, especially for that first one, I just wanted to mm. sit down and edit. Like, I honestly don't even eat. Like, I don't even get up. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's a distraction for me. And it's a very unhealthy thing. <laughs> I don't recommend you do this. But when I sit down on my laptop and I start editing, I usually will have the headphones in. If not, I'll probably have the laptop in front of me and then have, like, the footy on in front of me as well and just start tapping out and edit and edit and go and go and go. And I have a very high level of respect for the people that watch my game day vlog and I want it to be entertaining and I want every 20, 30 seconds it to be a new frame or there's something new coming across the screen if it's like a discount code or something. So like mm-hmm. the people are rewarded for watching the whole thing. That also earns me more ad revenue and, yeah, and of can put more food on the table. But at the same time, I think that it's that level of respect that people feel like if they watch it, they actually get something out of every single mm-hmm. minute. The work rate kind of thing, mate, I commend you for this. Uh, <laughs> it's your – I don't know if you've gotten, like, better in the last – I reckon you have, like, the last couple of months. You've just been grinding, bro. <laughs> it's, it's been incredible and I think that you were probably one of my main motivators last year when you started getting up at 5 or 6 a.m. and you started posting mm. about it. And that goes to show, like, you only – I think you only had 10,000 followers at the time but you were already an influence for me and we were kind of friends already but – it's crazy how you can be influenced by your friends and family, by mm. what they do. My dad's a big one and, and yourself is um, another one that I, that I look up to and um, I think the way that you go about it is is incredible. You're, you're up super early. You're working out twice a day pretty much every time. I mean, you've run 28Ks and then 8Ks in the last two <laughs> days, which is just obscene. Um, not something that I, I could do, my body could um, handle probably. But, yeah, I, I don't know. There's some days that are good and there's some days that I feel like I – I could be better in terms of the work rate kind of thing. and but, but I think the most important thing for me is being able to say, that's all right, you know, you don't have to be grinding 110% all the time. You grind when you need to grind and the, the rest of the time you can enjoy doing fun things. Um, and I think that that's the most important thing, to not beat yourself up about it. What's one thing you wish you did when you started making content or wish you knew even? One thing I wish I knew. When, when you I first started, before you posted your first video, like what do you – because we got people listening who are like looking to get into it. I, I know so many mm. and like random random individuals who you think would never post it but they've built up this amount of like of an image of themselves that they're mm. like, I'm never going to do it. I think that the most important thing and the most important metric is how many followers you have mm. on, on any platform. So then you have to go backwards from that most important metric and say, well, how do I get to that most important metric? Views to a point mm. because people, if they're viewing, if you get 5 million views, it doesn't mean you get 5 million, million followers, right? So don't get caught up in all these other metrics like followers, uh, like, sorry, like views and, and likes and comments. Focus on what's going to get you followers, which is adding, con- uh, adding value, um, producing consistent content, um, and, and the views and that will come and the, and the followers will start to come off that as well. Mm. So I think that focusing for me when I first started, I was like, oh, this got 5 million views. That's so good. Yeah. How many followers am I getting off that? Like mm. 5,000 followers? How's that going to help me on TikTok? Yeah. So focusing on, yeah, the most important metric and then working back from that. Yeah, start of the goal and work back. I love that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're running, keep running. We're with you every step of the way. You're probably a couple of Ks in and I know it starts to get tough, but you need to keep going. Still to come on the show, we've got we're going to get into a bit of running stuff because yeah, I want to hear I about your running. running. Yeah, I love running. we're, we're going to get into running. Um, we've got another running update after that, and then we're going to get into training, and we're going to talk about training in a different manner. So stick around for that. We've got also got a brimming mailbag. 
the mailbag is going to be crazy. I reckon mailbags. I've heard some of the Q and A's. Yeah, well, I've had to cut cut them out a few times. So, oh, you had any bad ones or not? Uh, heaps. Okay, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to. Yeah, how do you like what kind of running you do? Like, it's a running podcast. Obviously, you're in season at the moment, but you work really hard. It's all anaerobic stuff, though, isn't it? Like, yes, yes, it is. I think, and, and running for me is is a massive, massive just like part of my life. Like I mm. really, really enjoy it, especially in pre-season. I'm the first person to start running. We finish the season and two weeks later I'm like doing, doing big runs. So the, the running that I more so focus on is like 2K kind of um, time trials and that sort of stuff mm. because it's such an important metric that clubs really love to use to test how good your fitness is. But – for an AFL footballer or for a soccer player, it's not actually going to be the be-all and end-all. No. You have to be able to run 15, 16 Ks in in two hours mm-hmm. uh, or three hours, changing your speeds mm-hmm. to be able to play and not cramp, not get injured throughout a whole season. Mm-hmm. So I think that the running that I do, if we look at like a um, a pre-season kind of time, is, is going to be um, – probably like similar to you, probably a big run kind of on a Monday, big run on a Wednesday, and then kind of do some speed sort of stuff on a Friday. So Mm. something like that, mixing up um, anaerobic and aerobic. In season, I'm probably running 14 to 16 Ks on a Saturday. And then the rest of the week is maintenance, probably 5 Ks on a Tuesday and a Thursday, just trying to, like I said, maintain, not get um, any less fit. And uh, yeah, trying to, I don't know, hit the hit the weekend mm. running do you spot any gaps in your training like do you see things throughout the week you're like oh, i could do this like i should do this better yes i reckon i do it's a good question it's a very good question i think that recovery is always something that because we always think oh, i need to do the strength session mm. or i need to do um i need to go for this run it's like You've been sore for the last week. Yeah. You should be focusing on getting on the foam roller. You should be focused on going for like a cycle or going for a swim instead. So I think that for me and especially something that i am been focusing on this year and playing footy year round because I play up in the NT in the summer league and then come back and play here in the winter is just being able to really focus on, on recovering really, really strongly. Um, and I think that that's a gap in not just mine but I think every single person – could recover better. Do you think you could mm. recover better? Oh, 100%. Yeah. More, Do, is there anything emphasis. you think that you miss miss out on in terms of yeah, recovery sense? It's Well, it's definitely like all of it. Mm. Um, and it's probably just having rest. Like even on my rest days, like I'm coming to footy training with you today. I'm meant to be resting. <laughs> <As> I, <laughs> it's not good, it's is not it? not ideal. We had boxing this morning. I True. should be resting. True. Like, like, But I just want to do everything, you know, and you, you want to keep going. Do you ever feel like you overtrain? All the time, yeah. And is, like, but is that a the, bad thing? The whoop data. No, I don't think it is. It's same mm. with burnout. I think burnout's okay. I think it's a good sign. You know, like it's it's. Chris Judd spoke about it in his in his book. It's like that means you're working to the point, mm-hmm. and and it means you can come back and scale it back a touch and exactly. really work up up to the matter. Your two k time trial. Obviously, you've gotten it down to a nice number. What, what's your best ever? My best is five fifty five. I was a nineteen year old kid running around the Aspley Hornets track. I reckon my watch said it was 1.97, so it might have been yeah. a bit shorter than an actual 2K, but that's what my Apple Watch mm. said. I don't know if my Apple Watch is 100% right. I know a Garmin's probably a little bit more accurate. No, it just as. And, um, and yeah, I was, I was probably 76 kilos, so I was a whippet. All right, so we got someone who's neat trying to get a really quick 2K time trial. Mm. This applies for, for 3K as well, even a 5K. What are you doing? You want to improve your 2K time trial. Yeah. This is what I did. <laughs> I went and buddy ran a 2K every second day. I love this. It was ridiculous. I would literally go down to the Noosa track and I remember it didn't matter if it was rain, hail or shine, every second day I'd have a day running, a rest day, a day running, 2K time trials. Every time. Every just time. Just it. And I'd just run it. And then I'd do my session afterwards. So my session might be like, um, I think I did like eight, 400 metres or something afterwards. But I'd yeah. do that after I ran my 2K. I was like, run my 2K. Am I getting better? I didn't actually Mm. care throughout the week um, if I was getting like – it's kind of like weighing yourself. You don't care if it's Mm. going up and down every single day. It was more week by week. So I did it for about about 12 weeks. And it was um, week one, you know, on on the Monday, week two on the Monday, it was getting shorter. It was getting better. And I was like, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. 
And um, I think I started at like 6.54 mm. and I got it down to a whole minute. That's crazy. And it was literally just doing it every second day. But the the what I got out of that was like I started to get real mathematical. I was like, I have to hit 400 metres in mm. this, which means I have to hit 200 metres in this, which means I have to hit 100 metres in this. And it was like every like 100 metres was like 15 seconds or something. So I had to hit that and then that equaled out to like being – six minutes and I was like, well, if I can get better here and it just teaches you all of the kind of like, you know, I think Kobe Bryant said it before. He's like, um, I know what I'm going to do in a game because I've done it a thousand times before. And I was like, I've done this 2K like 200 times. So I know how to run it. Mm. And I think as well as a, a massive tip that I have for people when they're running a 2K is start at the front of the group and sprint for the first 100 metres. Don't sprint by like get out in front of everyone because the worst thing is getting stuck behind mm. someone and then in your head you're fighting this mental battle. Just like get out in front of everyone and then let people pass you. Just hold the inside lane yeah, because hang on. then they have to run around you. I love that. I feel like sports and exercise scientists, they'll be pulling their hair out at it but I totally <laughs> agree with it. Like just because people overcomplicate it. I've seen like 2K programs out there and stuff, which is fair enough. Mm. Like, you know, any kind of running program, that's great. Structure's good. But it's like, you know, 200 metres and then we go to four. Dude, you can just, run 2K. Just Most go people and do it. This. And, and, and another one to up. do is as well, um, every third day I, I just make it a 1K. Mm. And I do 1K with three minutes rest and then 1K again. So then, you know, 2K... I wanted to hit kind of six minutes. That was my goal. Mm -hmm. But then if I bring that down, halve it, it's 1K in three minutes. Mm -hmm. So I, I would run like three 1Ks in in, th in a three-minute time and that would like make me hit. I was like, I can do this. I can run it in a three-minute time for the 1K. And I was like, I just have to double that. And, um, yeah, that, that was kind of how I managed to get it down. A lot of people asked me about it and – uh, I think that my 2K, if I ran it now, it'd be like a 6.30. Like it wouldn't be uh, what it what it was before. But uh, yeah, that was when I was pretty lean and pretty rapid. Yeah, you would have been in good good form then. Uh, between footy, so so Victoria season finishes and then you go to um, uh, Darwin. Darwin, yeah. How, how much time is there in between it? Two weeks. Oh, is that all? Yeah, Because I, I was going to say, quick. do you have any kind of running ambitions like any kind of different styles of running i could see you doing like a tough mudder or even like a half marathon like, i'd love to do one of those like trail runs yeah a trail run i was gonna say we should do one let's do one let's do it are they how far are they like 60ks usually well that that's an ultra but you can get okay. different kind of trail runs we could do a, a 10k one 20k one i think that would be cool we should do it. would you do something like that yeah 100 percent. yeah <laughs> but like i also would I, i'd happily miss an nt game and go do a trail yeah. run instead yeah do you reckon we could do that 100 percent. that'd be sick that'd content be so as well good we should go to tassie or something and do it let's do it yeah tassie's yeah. too cold for me camping is oh it'll, it'll be absolutely <laughs> no, freezing because jesse did it yeah we'll do that yeah i'd be keen yeah yeah we'll make it happen we'll yeah we'll we'll link something up running questions i get a lot are surround like like food and, and fueling yourself like right before a run or right before a game for you, um, can't they, they both apply. What are you eating? Like even just the leader. I don't need the day before. Obviously we need to carb up a lot. But like before a run, before you have boxing and stuff, what are you eating to, to fuel yourself? Great question. If it's – now this is going to change depending on what kind of a run you're doing, right? Mm. If you're doing a really big run or if you're doing a medium run um, or if you're kind of just doing a sprint session, it, it'll probably change. I think for myself, and again, this is different for every single person. So I think that I'm going to preface this by saying trial and error mm. with everything, the, any type of thing, because things sit differently in each other's stomachs. Anyway, I would love to have half a banana or an apple, really high carbohydrates, high sugars, good sugars for you. Um, and it's just going to, obviously sugars, energy, it's going to just top up your glycogen stores, bang, mm. go out, Kick run. In. You'll feel great. Same with before a game, half a banana. Uh, if you're doing a big, big run, maybe a scoop of pre-workout, mm. maybe a coffee um, mm. if it sits well. I don't really like having a coffee before a run, but you can do that. You love yeah, I coffee. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing where it's different, right? Yeah. Some sort of caffeine if it, it, if it fits. Well, I mean, caffeine, it's such a good thing to pull on, isn't it? It's caffeine. fantastic. But but don't rely on it, mm. right? And I think that a lot of people tend to rely on like, they're like, I have to have this caffeine, I have to have this pre-workout before I work out. Mm. Be comfortable with working out without 
pre-workout yeah. without caffeine. It's also something you want to utilize like on game day or on race day or yep. on your fast run day. Like don't have it throughout. I, I wouldn't recommend relying on it throughout the week. Like just do it, you know. Now exactly now. right. Because you become reliant on it, mm. right? And then you have your, you know, you have your coffee on, on game day or, or on your, your race day. Mm. It doesn't hit you. <laughs> and you're like, we're running. Have another one. <laughs> yeah, running. Then your heart rate's at 180. <laughs> That sucks. sucks. <laughs> you start walking, you walk the rest. It is. Like, trail walk. Just trail walk. Do it. Jump the fence, <laughs> mate. The fence. Take your bib off and get out. <laughs> but you're Someone off. help me, all right? <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Walking. All right, good. Well, if anyone's running right now, you've got to keep going. Obviously, it's getting later into the stage. Um, chances are, like, often if you go for a run, it's like, oh, I'll run 5Ks, but if I'm feeling good, I'll run six. And then you get to four and a half, you're like, no way, I'm running the extra. Well, I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, do the extra. Do it, do it, do it. Just make sure you bloody do it. Tom, training. Yeah. I want to talk to you about training to be an athlete, but I want you to tell me if you were trying to be the worst possible athlete, tell me how you'd train. So I, like, I want to be world's worst athlete, okay? <laughs> what am I going to do? What you're going to do mm. is you're going to try and sleep two hours a night. Okay. So don't sleep because yeah. what's the point of recovering? No. There's no point, Not right? Good. So recovery is just useless. So good. never, hopefully no one clips this and like <laughs> says this is all these tips. To, <laughs> this is tips to become the That's best athlete. Plan. That's my plan. Uh, <laughs> don't sleep. Don't sleep. Waste of time. Also, don't eat. Nah. Why like, would you do that? Or eat really little because what's the point of refueling yourself? Mm-hmm. Useless. Obviously, there's there's a massive point of doing it and make sure you refuel <laughs> yourself. But if you're trying to be the world's worst athlete, yep. then don't. Okay. Don't eat because it's a waste of your time. Useless. I think as well, um, be distracted mm. by all these flashy lights we have in the modern 21st yeah. century world. Listen to them. Uh, listen to everything. You know, uh, uh, be distracted, be on your phone the whole time. Before, uh, Don't get in the zone before mm. you go out um, and you race or you play. Just be on your phone the whole time. Yep. Don't immerse yourself with, uh, with your teammates or your fellow competitors. No. Don't worry about don't it. Just be them. in your phone and chill out a little bit. Four, just succumb to everything that everyone tells you. If nice. someone tells you that you suck, you, probably you suck. suck. Yeah, yeah. All right? You're the worst. So right. just... Okay. Listen I reckon, to it. Yeah, listen to everything that every negative thing that people say about you, it's true. Okay, I like okay? that. Yeah. Just listen to it all because that will, that'll, that'll just, that'll happen. What do you reckon would have happened if you did that? Oh, God, I'd be bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I had this, oh, I don't want to stay off, but someone <laughs> sent me this video from the weekend and it's like a video of me and I've got the ball on the, on the back flank and, and they're like, Prime Trade, you're a pussy. <laughs> You're the worst player ever. <laughs> you are the worst. And I'm you like, are the worst. And I'm like, <laughs> coming from imagine, the sidelines. Imagine, imagine if I thought, you know what? They're right. You're right. <laughs> I am the worst player. There's a reason that I'm imagine. here and you're right there. Yeah. Because I am the worst. I'm the worst. You should give me your jersey. Yeah, you know, mate. <laughs> Actually, now that you put it on, here you go, King. <laughs> So, yeah, make sure you used to come and, uh, and listen to everything mm-hmm. that, that people say. I think I had, a, I think I had five, but um, I'm pretty happy with those, That's really. Good. No, I like it. Um, as well, just don't spend any time with your friends and family. Mm, go full. Just go full tunnel vision. Yeah, and make own, sure you burn out. Yeah, make sure you burn out. Mm. Tunnel vision, don't focus on anyone else's advice. Mm. Um, if people are well, giving you, know you advice. Yeah, 100%. People are saying, hey, maybe you should do this in your next race. Maybe mm. you don't go out so hard in your 2K. Yeah. Say, no, Prime Train told me. No. So I'm, list- I'm, I'm only doing I don't what he said. To anyone. Yeah, I don't listen to anyone yeah. else. I'm Prime Train. I do what I want. I'm Prime so Train. So don't tell me what to do. Literally the greatest. Uh, <laughs> the greatest ever grace this earth. So, yeah, they're, they're probably the five things. So I've got don't sleep. Yep. Don't eat well. Succumb to everything that every single person says about you. Yep. Be distracted by your phone. And uh, the last one, which was. Uh, it, well, I literally just had it. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> listen to. Don't just go tunnel vision. Don't listen to your friends. Go and tunnel, yeah. Don't, oh yeah. Don't 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 talk to anyone. Don't talk to anyone. It's good, mate. Everyone's I, the worst. I'm the only person that exists. You, you're doing really well. <laughs> I've got. We got. To, oh, it's time for the mailbag. But cool. before we get into that, I want to ask you, what's your biggest failure in regards to your career, and how did you learn from it? So what have you done that you've gone? Oh, I shouldn't like. 
I'm, I shouldn't have done that, but I'm going to come back and, and learn from it. Is there anything that speaks to mind? It's a very interesting question. It's a very, it's a very deep question. I think it's hard because you always feel like your career is in its infancy. Like mm. I feel like I've, I've have been doing this for two weeks, mm. but in actual, we've been chipping away at it for a good four years now. I think in terms of the direction that I'm going now and the direction that Prime Train's going, I'm I'm grateful to everyone that's that's been a part of it, and I feel like it's going in the right direction. I feel like so far I haven't done anything that has uh, jeopardised that. But maybe looking back, I think that it would be a lie. Now, of course it would be a lie if I said that um, I didn't want to play AFL football. Mm. And that was always my goal growing up. And that was, that was kind of everything. And I guess that looking back on my life, I, I wish I did. I, I wish I had the guidance to, to do more throughout school and um, probably my junior career as well to to be to be a better player because in mm. in a hundred percent honesty like I'm not that level and I never have been and I never will be and that's not a that's not something that that I think about every day until you probably mention it then but I guess in terms of failing that's probably where I wanted to be and anything that was less than that was mm. probably a failure mm. and um, and what I've been fortunate enough to do is turn around and look at that and say, well, footy's my passion. Footy's something that I'm, that I'm reasonably good at, but I'm not, I'm not elite at. Um, and I think that this is something that I could make enjoyable um, if I started to, you know, produce content on it. And mm. I guess that from a failure became probably my greatest success. Yep. Yeah, I love that. Thank God you didn't make it, to be honest, mate. Otherwise yeah, so it would have been that training. bad. <laughs> That's a fantastic Thank answer. Thank God I didn't make it because I've been that embarrassed, bro. <laughs> no, you've been like a stunned mullet at the MCG. I've been looking up. around. <laughs> Apparently it's That's, quite lonely out there. Yeah. Uh, we've got a pretty good mailbag today. Cool. To kick us off, how do you work through some of the hate you receive? Love your work. This is from James.Stewart. How do Thank you work you. through it? Like, mate, you've copped it a little bit. Thank you, James. It's very nice. Yeah, I definitely do cop it a lot and I quite enjoy it. I relish it. It's something that I – you hear it all when you're out in the field. There's 100% times where you don't like it, mm. <laughs> obviously. It's not, I don't like being called Could've a done flog. Without it. I yeah. don't like getting, getting abused from over the fence saying I'm a pussy <laughs> and saying that well, – yeah. <laughs> I tell you the other week it was like, well, train like an athlete, doesn't look like it's doing much for you, you dickhead. <laughs> Didn't someone shout out, oh. your missus is hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go back home to your missus. That's, that's the oh, kind right. of sledge you can come up. <laughs> okay, dude. I will with that's the four positive points. positive sledging. <laughs> what if we change sledging to be positive? Oh, imagine. How imagine good would how that good be? it would be. Oh, that would get in your head more, I reckon. Yeah. I think you're doing really well today, Tom. <laughs> Keep your head up. It'll come, mate. It'll come. That's what my teammates try and do. And I just... <laughs> 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 nah, I don't know. I think, I think with hate, it's... Um, it's one of those things that probably I wasn't always great at dealing with and uh, I went through a, a lot of kind of defending myself throughout high school um, because I've always been a quite out there person with the things that I wear, with, with what I do. I'm quite an extrovert and, and it was something that I said to myself from very early on. It's like, well, if you're going to be this person, I think my parents said it to me as well. It's like, if you're going to be that person, expect someone to try and knock you down a peg and that's something you're going to have to deal with your whole life. And whether they know you, they don't know you, they're always going to try and knock you down. And your response will say more about you um, than anything else will in your entire life. So I guess for me, the only way that, that I deal with it is kind of looking at, at what I'm grateful for and, and, and happy for in my life. And, you know, if push comes to shove and everything's terrible and everyone's saying you're the worst person in the world, I've, I've got a great family. Um, you know, I've got great friends, I've got yourself in my life who are always, you know, um, pulling me up to so surround myself with, with good people um, and, and, and staying busy as well. Don't, ha- don't, mm, don't dwell you know, on like, it. Don't dwell on it. If someone don't, doesn't like you, who cares? There's, you know, there's not much I could do. No. You know, like I could, I could change my whole life to make them happy, but mm. is that going to make me happy? Probably not. I'm happy. Yeah. So that's, that's no, all that matters. That's good, mate. Jack M. Hassett says, how does, do you find 
um, the travel involved with playing country footy so far away from home. So where, Wangaratta, where you play, mm. about three hours away. Yeah, about three and a half with traffic sometimes and I enjoy it. I, I, I love getting in the car with, with my mates, having a chat, put on a potty. Mm. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's one of those times where we're always on our phones, right? Everyone's always on their phones. Mm. When you're driving, it gives you an opportunity. You put your phone away, hopefully. The other people put their phone away and you actually get to break down some bloody barriers and have a genuine conversation with them. You actually get to know someone, um, which is, I think in our society is something we don't do very much. Hugely for men as well. Mm. Like a, 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 a specifically driving a car, blokes can actually hold a conversation when they're not sitting across from each other like this because it's mm. really confronting. Yeah. But if you're both driving and looking out the window, it takes it's less awkward. It is. So like guys actually open up. Yeah, and guys are actually, like I said, you break down Mate, the barriers. You don't need therapy. You just need country footy. You just need country footy. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Look, you need. Look, the, the, uh, the travel is no, no big one for me. I mean, I go up and play in NT, which is five-hour plane trip away. So it's not that much of an issue. But if it is an issue for you, then play in the city. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> not going to be an issue. Yeah. Last question, what are some of the struggles in starting your business just give us one one struggle to start your business in starting your business i think that the biggest struggle in starting your business okay two struggles one and they're kind of linked financially mm. it's quite difficult for a lot of people to pull together 5 10k maybe that they might need to start a to start a full business and i think two is is leaving behind that safety net mm. of the well paying employment job that you might have Right, So what you have to do and, and, and something that we probably both did is continue to work your job and just keep taking the paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. Yeah. Work it, work it, work it. On the side, your side hustle. Work up that, build up mm. that, build up that. Use your bit of your paycheck to pay for your general life, living, food, um, expenses and, and, and a shelter hopefully mm. and then put a little bit into your side hustle. If it's a different account or if you're paying for samples of clothing, um, if you're paying for barbells, if you're paying for whatever it might be, right? Um, so I think that that's a, that's a struggle that a lot of people have. But then once you get to that point and you've earned enough money and, and you're ready, don't be afraid to take that jump mm. because you'll never know how high that jump is uh, if you never jump. Mm. Bang on, love it. It's one of the biggest balancing acts, isn't it? Is. it? That, that having a job and starting a, a business. Mm. I can't believe we managed to do it when we were it's, so young. It's very, it, yeah, we're very fortunate, mm. I think. Um, but I think that something that we all have in common is we just had the, the guts to say, this is now me. Yep, this is it. I'm going to jump into this. And this is going to be 100%. And so many people will probably have a great business idea but don't jump into it because oh, they're too scared. Go, capitalise. Jump on it. You'd hate yourself. Oh, mate. Don't look back on your life and say, I wish I did more. Bang on. Never. Prime Train, thanks for coming on, mate. Love Always you. a pleasure, mate. I love you so much. And everybody, keep running. Keep running.